What's going on, Giants fans? Welcome to Breaking Tackles, the New York Giant podcast. I am your host, Antonio, on the phone. And today, we actually have a special guest to the podcast. I got Manny on the podcast. Manny, what's going on, man? How you feeling? I'm doing good, Antonio. Appreciate you for letting me come on. Absolutely. And and just to give you guys a heads up, man, I met Manny strictly through Twitter, Giants Twitter. Um, I have no problem bringing in, you know, fellow Twitter heads to talk Giants because this is what we live, breathe and die about. It's just our Giants. And unfortunately, the season that we go into, it is what it is. But uh, Manny, I've added, I think we had each other. We got like a week or two weeks ago. We added each other already. We met yeah. through one of the Twitter spaces. And yep. man, it's been a blast, man, going back and forth with you on Giants related stuff, man. Oh, yeah, no, man, it's been a blast for me, too. And, you know, living in Texas, you don't get a lot of chances to talk, you know, Giants football and stuff with anybody. So being able to get on Twitter and meet the community in general, no, nah, it's been it's been awesome. And uh, again, man, uh, I, I've been I've been enjoying being able to retweet to you and stuff as well, too, man. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. For sure. My question to you is, so do you have a while now on Giants Twitter and just just how long do you have to, just in that community and stuff like that? Is that recently for you or have yeah, you been there for a while? Yeah, like I um, honestly haven't been on. I obviously started Twitter. I honestly really started Twitter like the beginning of this year. Like I had Twitter before, but I right. didn't really get into it until just this year. Yes. Because I mean, because I, you know, it seems like every news breaks on Twitter first before anything else. So and everything, everything yeah. is, you see it right away on Twitter. That's why I don't even watch ESPN, to be honest. I don't watch none of that stuff. To, I don't even, you know, it's entertaining to watch like first take and things like that. But to be honest, it's just a, so much time consuming that I don't, I don't even, I stay away from those shows. I just like to get some facts. And usually that's either Bleacher Report for me or Twitter and, mm-hmm. and just keep it moving. And then, and, and for me, it's just tape and, and, and then just 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 facts. To be honest, I, I hate hearing you know because I feel like it contaminates my own train of thought when I even hear other people's stuff, um, especially yeah. like mainstream media who I feel like sometimes they just do a bad job covering uh, our local teams. And they make their narrative what they want, you it's, know. It's like, a, it's, like it's it's narrative. It's narrative. Uh, 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 yeah, it's narrative driven. Now it's it's a little little facts, and it's mostly of like what people think. It's opinionated. Um, journalism. Like, that's what it's called. Yeah. Like, like, a, like for an example, I watch Undisputed often. I love that show. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out Shay. Shout yeah. out Skip. Um, but I watch that show often, and they always say, like, Skip always makes the excuse for Baker Mayfield. He's been in the league for four years. He's had three different head coaches, three different OCs, blah blah blah. And it's like, I mean, Daniel Jones. That's that's Daniel Jones. Yeah. Three years in the league, two OC, three OCs, three OCs. two head coaches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is not this. I don't. This is not defending Daniel Jones. No, but, I, you know, I understand the, what you're the, saying. Like, yeah, the media, yeah, the media you, you, runs you can't pick and choose when you want to use that specific narrative, and that's exactly what kind of gives you the problem with with watching things like that. And I'm just like, all right, you guys just pick and choose when you guys want to use that. And um, yeah, but long story short, I mean, let's get to business, which is the Giants unfortunately losing to the Why? Cowboys, no, <laughs> <laughs> twenty one to six, and uh, this was. Yo, by now, Manny, we're like numb to this kind of stuff. It's like, how are the Giants? We don't even ask how the Giants are going to lose because we know how they're going to lose. Their offense is not going to put up enough points. This is, I think, like the, the, the sixth or seventh consecutive game. They can't even get 21 points on offense. Um, yeah. Glennon, is, it is what it is. I mean, his he has a record sheet and... Why he has a a very strong losing record as opposed to in, in his win losses is for a reason, man. The the guy is just he's a backup quarterback, and I dare to say he's not even a good backup quarterback. No, nah, he's he's definitely we had we were better when he's we had uh, Colt McCoy. Yeah, oh yeah, hell yeah, because Colt McCoy won a game here, and lo and behold, I think he won two games in Arizona. So he 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 yeah, I think he went. I think he had a winning record for them this year. My suspicious on that. Uh, my suspicion on that, to be honest, is, and this is what's gonna come bite the Giants in the it bit the Giants in the ass. They wanted zero type of competition, and 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 rightfully so. Listen. They wanted no type of competition, no type of smoke for Daniel Jones. They just wanted somebody to sit behind him. But with a, that's not Eli Manning. That's not a guy that's going to go out there every single day and, yeah. and play. 
So you have to have somebody semi-competent behind him. The Giants do not spend enough resources on the backup quarterback. And there you go. That that's that's definitely what you see right there. But nonetheless, dude, this game, it was a, 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 again the all the defense balling out. Literally the only points that they gave out, it's because of bad field positioning from the Giants turnovers to the defense. And it's like, man, it's, 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 it's a different week, same same story again, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just kind of, it's obvious. This offensive system is broken. It's it's completely broken. The coaches, I won't, no, I'll start. The, the players don't have any, any confidence in it. You were yeah. showing a video, a breakdown. I think it was the play that a Colt, that uh, Glennon got enough room, passed it to uh, pass it to Evan Ingram, first down. Um, you showed like these two routes by these guys, by and the wide receivers, and crossing it, routes that they were literally they, they were just, they were gonna clothesline each other. Yeah, like, but then you there's also, no uh, death there. And then you also see too, like they also. Um, Oh man, Mita. They so also this is the new portal plus. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, they also um like they also you also saw in another situation, like they like there was literally two wide receivers just outside of the crossing route. So there was other there was two other wide receivers just next to each other. I couldn't even tell you who they were. It, to be it, that happened either. over again. If you notice the yeah. play where Saquon was confused, like where are you throwing? Are you throwing that to me or are you throwing that to the guy outside? Which was the it was a drop, it was a it could have been an interception too. It was ugly. It was yeah. Ingram that was like a little bit further away towards the sideline, and and Saquon was running a dump off. He was flaring out to the right, and 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 Glennon threw in between both of the guys on the ground. And it's like who was that too? But you start. Uh, it's, it's like you're saying nobody on that offensive has in that offense has confidence. No, and rightfully so. Nobody should have confidence in that, and, and that's what I kind of wanted to. To point out to people at the beginning of the year, like it's not just Daniel Jones who might not have confidence. It's the entire, it's everybody. It's the offensive line. It's a wide receiver. I mean, receiver. Galladay said it. He, he did? Galladay said in the very beginning of the season, you can't expect this offense to pick up immediately in the beginning of the season. It takes time. I think that was his way of saying it's going to be some gas, take out the G. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and to be honest, like, it, again, I, it, it's funny because this offensive, even the offensive line, the no. offense, the pre-snap, everything has looked a little better. This offensive line is bad. This, it, yeah. it's, it, it, minus, need, minus AT. Obviously, um, we we need another tack, uh, another tackle uh, opposite of of of, um, of Andrew of, Thomas. Of Andrew Thomas, we need a, a, at least two guards, possibly. But for sure, for sure, listen. Another thing too, it's gonna be really hard to replace four guys off the off season. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who you think stays out of that offensive line next year? I mean, taking Andrew, Andrew Thomas will stay. Stay. Ben, yes. Ben, ben Bredesen, Shane Lemieux. But Lemieux Le, is Lemieux going to be able to come back? And is he going to be? I think be... his injury. I think I think there's more questions on Gates's injury than Gates Lemieux's is probably injury. done with football. Correct. But uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm never going to count that guy out because my man. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he he. How many dudes do you know that play a position for the first time and their first time playing it? I mean, I, those are freaks that are able to go in and start the, for the first time at a position in right. the NFL at a high level, play all 16 games. Yeah, 16, 17, 17 16 games last and be year. be competent, too. Be competent. Like, he yeah. wasn't – like, and he was the toughest dude on an offensive line. Like, last year he was our best offensive – no, Kevin Zeitler, but he was the best offensive lineman. But nonetheless, like him – Matt Skura, I think you keep them. I think you keep those guys. Skura, to, th- to, be, to, be, to be honest, it's like just, Skura yeah. is, and this is funny because Twitter is kills Hernandez, but I have a bigger problem with Skura mm. than I do with Hernandez. Just because I feel like with Hernandez, when I watch him pull, when I watch Hernandez in motion, I love everything about it. But what, yes, but the stunt life is just. Is insane, but I'm also like, man, you also have like the shittiest right tackle in the history of right tackles, dude. <sighs> but yeah, it, 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 but 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 I understand also, like, yo, there's no defense for Hernandez, but I'm just scared, dude. Manny, I'm scared that this guy is gonna go somewhere else and kill it. 
dude. Like, like, uh, like Eric Flowers, like Justin Eric Pugh. Flowers, like all these other guys. Fuck, is more than one guy who's killing it right now. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's the why. Zyler I think stuff, it, yeah. The Zyler stuff. The stuff. I'm not really buying it 100 percent because listen to Sack. Uh, uh, this guy, um, Ravens QB man, to sack him in front of, right in his face. Lamar Jackson. Lamar mean? Jackson. It takes yeah. a lot. Dude, dude, dude is so mobile and, and, and able to escape so easily. Uh, up the middle rush, he's going to escape the pocket. Like, it's really hard to get to Lamar Jackson up the middle. So that's why when it's like, oh, he hasn't given up a sack all year. Like, yeah, he also has Lamar Jackson. Uh, I mean, yeah, remember that one tweet? Remember that one tweet about, and by the way, Billy Price, don't leave him. Leave him where you found him. Okay. I, that Remember that one tweet that Giants Twitter had that said, Billy Price hasn't given up a single sack this year. It's like, okay, see that that may, it's kind of like when people say, oh, he's not sacking the quarterback enough. Okay, well, what do the pressures look like? Exactly. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of different things there besides giving up sacks. There is there is yes, absolutely pressures, hits. Those are all things that count that actually affect the throw that could get you know it could get real ugly. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that I could that I would say that's not strong in my in my game and in my defensive the offensive line is, yeah, okay, this offensive line is giving up a sack or two in the last couple of games, they've gotten better that way. But still, what about the pressures? What about the hits on the quarterback? Is that in an alarming rate? Even though yeah. I forgot who it was that graded it, that said that our offensive line was like one of the best offensive lines this week. I was like, how? Like, how? Right. But yeah. Yeah. Supposedly they had a good grade. And if it's, I don't know if it's PFF, but if it is PFF, then that's why they, there you go. It's PFF. I, I can't stand PFF grading at least. <laughs> For nothing, man. I like their analytic stuff when they break down. I love their their pressures, their their all this other stuff. But the grades itself, I can't stand it, man. I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. But yeah, um, I, I think it's kind of like you just take the you, you just find the in the middle, right? When it comes to them, like okay, look at their grades, but then look at the tape, and then just kind of go from there, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, going back on top, like I think you need, I think. Matt Pert probably is soon. He'll still be on the team. He'll still be on the team. And Pert did show. Listen, I I, I watched the film and I was like, I was impressed. Too. Like the edges were, it, the pressure wasn't coming from the edge rushers in that game against Dallas. It was right up the middle. Wait, wait, That's, wait. Lawrence Taylor playing? There was no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Michael Parsons. Everybody is. Yeah, dude. Like, hey, listen. I wanted Michael Parsons, and I think he's a great player. Right, right, right. But no one. Yeah, me too. You no, heard my story about Lawrence Taylor. You can't. Nobody is Lawrence Taylor. No, you nobody. Can't, you can't even, dude. He's a rookie. He hasn't even finished the season, and people yeah. are already putting him in. Comp, at, talking about that, like that's that's wild to me. Let him just. And, and it's funny. Somebody on Twitter said, like, let him just be Michael Parsons. Like, why yeah. you got to compare him with anybody else? And that's absolutely true. The kid is a great Rest, player. Yeah. He's having a great rookie season, but. That's it. That's all it is. A great rookie season. Can we see this kid put together his sophomore, his junior year? That's a lot of things. Even the Giants, and we've seen a lot of good promise from dudes in their first year. And oh, Shane Simmons. And we don't get nothing afterwards. Exactly. Um, yeah, and yeah. Even no, Carter. I think yeah. Carter had like a, a decent rookie year, and then had complete got hurt. I think his sophomore year got, and then his junior year, which is now he's completely. I mean, but he's coming back from that injury. It's crazy. Yeah. But, Speaking of Carter, and and, and, and I want to get your opinion on this. Lorenzo Carter had his best game of the season, in my opinion. It just stuck on tape. From the first drive, he was batting down balls, getting pressures. He's He had tackles for a loss on the run game. like And you could just see him manhandling the, the, the tackles for the Cowboys. Right. Now that has me thinking, this guy's going to be a free agent after this season. Do we bring him back at a really cheap price? I I put him in the same category as like Will Hernandez. Mm-hmm. You were mentioning Will Hernandez mm-hmm. earlier. I think you could if the if you if they want to come back on that you know team friendly con- and I'm get your money if you can get it Super. elsewhere. Exactly, I'm a player first but, type of person. Absolutely. Yeah, but I think they could. I think and listen, the whole cap to me is a fugazi. You absolutely. can really. You can manipulate it and make it how you want, and if yep. it's worth it, it's worth it. Yep. But I think you, I think they can come back. I don't think you need to come in and be like, "Oh, our edge room is back with Lorenzo Carter," or "Oh, our offensive line rebuild is done with Will," and it's bring him back. Happen. No, I, I think Will would have to come in as a backup role and and then and compete. It compete if but, and if but, you can't beat a rookie, right. Then there you go. 
Right, right. Or, or, or anybody. I mean, uh, truth be told, we probably are going to sign free agent linemen. Alpha, uh, it has, you have to get them from everywhere. Like, how you address a real offseason is you address your problems on free agency and you bring in talent on the draft. So you're going to have this combination of rookie linemen and veterans that are, you know, somebody's trash that you saw something on film. Hopefully the new GM, hopefully the new GM that's outside of this organization finds, yeah. sees something in somebody says, okay, listen, this guy might be able to do something here. Yeah. Like, for example, um, the, we I, that guy, and I, he's in another team now, but we brought in um, somebody from the Vikings that he was supposed to be like this, this on, on, low key. Mike Remmers. No, not no, 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 no. Uh, I, on defense, he was he was a lineman, and and he's now playing. I think like in San Francisco or oh, something. Oh yeah, uh, a Fedioka. Yeah, that a guy. Fedioka. Yeah, nothing happened with him. But you know what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of things where a lot of the Vikings Twitter was like, "Dude, you guys got a a steal with this guy. You got a dog. This yeah. guy has had so many quarterback hits and pressures." Yeah, the stat the stacks weren't there, but he might have it with you guys, and he didn't even freaking make the team. But no, nah. yeah, I think he's on. Thing. I think he was. I think he. I think he played in. I think he's playing for Cleveland right now too, and he was on their practice squad for a bit. Yeah. But they and and I mean that's the same thing that was said about um about PJ Pat Shermer or okay. Oh, well, Pat Shermer's offense. Like, remember that story? He's like Stephon Diggs hit up OBJ and said, "You're gonna love his system. You're gonna love it," and then it lasted one year and a year later he left so i mean it's all about what you do when you come you, in you know what's crazy man i think it's just been bad luck for these coaches like pat Shermer's offense was competent but his defensive coordinator was BC. incredibly incompetent and guy's not in the league anymore and, and and now look at this team where the defense is competent but jason garrett is a fraud dude like everything about that offense was fraudulent no motion the pre-snap was off and and i always question myself like okay are they protecting daniel jones or yeah, trust him. are they holding him back like what's like what's going on here and i'm and i'm not yeah. a daniel jones supporter but that offense made daniel jones look even worse i mean yeah it's, i mean he yeah it, it, i'm sorry i remember i was um I don't know if you. I don't know if you listen to uh Talking Giants. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, that, don't you? No, no. Well, I, 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 li I listen to them pretty often, right? And I mean, they um, they they have said, like, it just when you're talking about like the off when it talks about that the, the, the scheme? Jason Garrett's scheme right. is perfect when you have a perfect offensive line like in the that like in the Cowboys. I disagree with when that, you, man. I disagree with no, that. No, no, no. Like they, they weren't like. It wasn't defending yeah, Jason no, no, Garrett's no, system, no, but, but they like, were just saying, like, that. it could work if everything is perfect. Now, that's the thing. Now, here's my kind of argument to that. What if Freddie Kitchens was running the Dallas Cowboys? They would have had a Super Bowl already. That, that, that's the kind of – that's how back Jason Garrett was holding that those guys back. Because, again, when when Jason Garrett was there, and even though people were like, oh, yeah, he was only coordinator for a couple of day, a couple of years, and then, and then um, another guy took over – you still saw the same thing, which was no motion from pre-snap. Very little motion. It was pretty much line up and go. It yeah. was these exact same type of routes where it was these comeback routes. Like, the Dallas Cowboys were winning games on talent and talent alone. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, so if it's you like have he the was talent even there. To over there, too. Like, imagine if they had an offense where it was motion, where, like, look, look at the numbers now of that team now does a lot of motion, has a lot of different things, and look at the numbers that Prescott is putting. He's he's in the talks of like top quarterbacks right now. Like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so, uh, even so with my, the... my argument to that is, is, it's I get what they're saying. But like that fits a perfect offense, a perfect off, perfect offensive line. But that was just but, hiding it to me. It, but then, but then it's not just. I mean, it's not just that too. It's also, you know, you get the quarterback, you got the running backs, you got the wide receivers, you got the it's tight end, you got the offensive line. Like that's that's what they were kind of more saying is like this offense doesn't work unless everything is perfect. And in the NFL, that's not the case exactly. often. It, it, so you need an offense that's going to be able to. Yes, still, in that case, I agree absolutely. You know, yeah, no, forward. no, yeah. absolutely, man, and. 
and it's and I always think about I always laugh just thinking about that. Like I kind of get like a smirk inside of like, yo, Dallas, if they had anybody else running their offense with some type like imagine like a, a the Kansas City offense at that time in Dallas where you would have like the pre snap motion and stuff like that. I think the most I think the people that are doing the most service for the quarterbacks is Kansas City. Kansas City, yeah. the I think it was last year that well they played the Giants this year too. But last year, I think I broke down and I said, Kansas City had, the Giants had eight pre-snap motions. And not, liter- not literally, and it, this is what I classified as motion. If you go from one side to the other, that was motion. Not just go, but come back and line up at the same exact spot. So I, that's what I determined as motion. The Giants had eight motions the entire game. The Kansas City Chiefs had eight motions on their first drive. That's freaking insane. But it's so crazy because Patrick Mahomes, yes, he is an all-star. He is an MVP caliber quarterback. But at the end of the day, he's still young, bro. The X's and O's are not there for him entirely. So what does Andy Reid do? Makes his job easier by telling him pre-snap motion, whether it's man or zone, based on who's moving where. And it's yes. more than one or two dudes that are moving at the same time. Sometimes they even flip the formation. And it's like, dude, that is so clutch. That's a coach understanding modern day football. You know, and that that's 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 something that we, we just don't see in in the, everything about the Giants is I want this smash mouth, smash mouth football. Like, dude, that's nineteen ninety. Run down yeah, run down the hill running down the hill. If you're not passing the, street, the ball runs. in this league, you're not gonna win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like ex- exception is Patriots, and Patriots are the exception to everything. They are the, the... Raven. The Ravens are a bit of an exception. But, but, when it comes but to even how much they but even too. the Ravens though they 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 have a running back at quarterback if you want to call it that way. So it's crazy too. Like who has the ball in the it's so that's a whole even completely different animal. They're winning wildcat yeah. every freaking time. I'm talking about like if you really have a pocket passer who's obviously not Lamar Jackson fast. The only outlier is the Patriots themselves. Like, that's yeah, crazy. But, and even still, that one, it was just that one game. It's not like, I mean, it's not, it's exactly. not like Mac Jones has a thousand yards passing. Right, right. He has good numbers for a rookie. Right, right, right. But, it, but, but, but it, it, even the Patriots are the only team I think right now who are probably like run heavy team. I think, I would say, I, I don't, the Colts. The Colts are too. And even, and, and, and I mean, this not, last game, I think. And the last game, I think Carson Wentz completed like five passes. And that's crazy. That's crazy. And, and obviously, the Eagles and the Ravens are always are going to be the run-heavy teams. But that's because, again, of their quarterback situation, too. But I'm talking about, like, if you want to consider out of these pocket passers, like, mm-hmm. it's just, it is what it is. This is a passing league. And you can have an elite defense, but if your offense is not putting up points, you're not going to win games in this league. In the meantime, if you have a bad defense, you can still win games if your offense is just putting up points, i.e. Kansas yeah. City Chiefs, who now all of a sudden their defense has gone crazy. <laughs> but That, that get-right game. But before the, the defense Giants. got crazy, exact get-right game by the Giants, but before the defense got crazy, Kansas City was keeping them in a winning record because they were outscoring the other teams. And so Perry was like, yo, Patrick Mahomes is having a bad year. Yeah, but that offense is still putting up 27 points per game. Like, Yeah, like a I, bad I year for him is he has, what, 30 touchdowns, 11 picks. I mean, yeah, that's a bad year, but we're comparing him off of that 50 touchdown, 5,000 yard passing MVP season he had. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, you, you, when you compare somebody to what the, the best they have, but you still, you see the numbers, I mean, you really should just be trying to compare him to what, don't, I, you really should try to compare him to the league, not right. to what he did in the past. Right, because 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 he's at the end of the he's day, still like, top five. Uh, exactly. At, at, at worst, he's the third best quarterback in the NFL right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, back back to this game, man. Like yo, like yeah. listen, I jokingly on 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 when Glenn opened, I said we're gonna score thirty points, and and, and Giant Twitter took that way serious, and. and <laughs> Deservingly so. Listen, I'm not going to make excuses for anything. My thing is I was excited that it wasn't Jones playing quarterback at the time. Because, listen, and, and I'll break it down in here in this podcast. The problem with Jones is either it's Jones or coordinators. And mind you, Jones hasn't really played in this offense. So I would love to see. I, I, obviously, we're not going to see him anymore. But 
as this offense is getting away from Jason Garrett, it is a new, a different offense, dudes. We're seeing different formations. We're seeing different things in pre-snap. The Wildcat is being introduced to this freaking team. Like, we just, that, that was unheard of at the beginning of the season. So, and, and, and the only game that Daniel Jones got with Freddie Kitchens was that first game, and then he got hurt after that. That There was not enough time there to make that that, that transition. It was only a couple of days. This right. offense has been removed from that. My problem with Jones is there was not enough downfield throws, and not even downfield. It's, it's all of 10 or more yards down the field with Jones. Everything was like a dink and dunk behind the line of scrimmage, three or four yards. It was a lot of that and not enough. And, and mind you, Joe, I, I, maybe not this year, but obviously Jones is an accurate enough passer that he, he in his career, he's had good numbers throwing it down the field. Yeah, so He was like one of the better quarterbacks at that. La, especially last year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he this, didn't, this year is just like, dude, why, why are we holding this guy back? Why is this guy not getting so deep? What's whoop of Glennon? So, so that was, in my opinion... Jones' fault in terms of the passing. I could get into a little more things in a second. With Glennon, he does stay in the pocket, takes the hit, throws the ball, but he's just wildly inaccurate. Like, it is what it is. He's missing dudes. Like, a lot of throws, they weren't even competitive. And another thing, too, is the first game Glennon got in, I felt like the offense all around him let him down. The receivers dropped too many passes. I think that he did enough to win that game against Miami. The other two games after that, I was like, oh, no, Glennon, Glennon is not doing anything to deserve to keep this job anymore. But, again, the same problems, the problems that Glennon have, in my opinion, are not the problems that Daniel Jones has. And that's what sucks about it, that it's not like I, I, I personally don't want another, neither of them, to be honest. Yeah, Um I'll say this about Daniel Jones because I've been a real so I've been a supporter of him mm-hmm. since day since one. I, so, since right? we saw yeah since no nah, I mean that day one I was confused at okay. what, what the Giants were drafting right. but then then when you sit down you actually see it but that like, first okay, season you know was what? decent right yeah that rookie season that that especially that Tampa that first game against Tampa and then the games after that and stuff he he really showed that he has that there's something there right then obviously second year is what it was. Third year has been not great either. It's been tough. For me, it's not so much the play. I feel like if you put Dan, if you like Dan Jones was drafted by the Patriots, he'd be Mac Jones now. He'd be right. good. He'd right. be he'd be considered like, oh, this could be our future. Right. If he got drafted to any better situation, I agree with he'd that. Be, by the way. He'd be fine. If this team did right by him with the offensive line, he'd be fine. The OC, he'd be fine. But the for OC, me, the biggest to reason me is the OC. I, big deal. I don't think like I'm kind of on the pundit of like for me, if I'm Giants brass, Daniel Jones comes back a fourth year. We don't give him a fifth year option. Right, you let him play it if out. He, unless he wins the Super Bowl, which is not happening. Unless he wins right. the Super Bowl for the Giants, you don't extend him at all. No, even if, I mean that that's that's my height because at this point, like, if he wins twelve games, you got to. Case Keenum made it to the NFC Championship game one year. That's why I'm always like, uh, hold off on that. But so, the biggest reason why so it's I don't it's bigger want... than that. So so you have to check yeah. out the intangibles. Is it there? Like, like again, my thing but with if... Jones. Go ahead and go, go, finish your no, point. No, I'm sorry. I just want to just make this point across. Right. I just want to make this point. Like, it's not the play. It's not the player. It's not the toughness. But it's the, the for me the biggest thing is the injuries. I don't have a he's problem He's had with three, that. three seasons, three seasons, and he's missed time towards. If this was a playoff team, those three seasons, that would be. Holy kind of crap, trash. we were missing our quarterback. So that's and, true. It's not, and I know that's not his fault. Yes. But, I mean, at a certain point, too, you kind of got to just say, I mean, we can't – how can we trust this guy to lead no. our franchise if we can't even trust him to play a full slate? I didn't even think about it like that. That's absolutely true. I also think that as Giants fans, we are spoiled because we had Eli Manning now <laughs> miss a game. So we don't understand that, yo, listen, quarterbacks are going to miss at least three games in a season. Like, it's going to happen. But – in Daniel Jones' case, obviously he's missed more than three games this season. Did he? How many games did he miss last season? Two, two games. He missed the uh, the Seahawks and the Browns game. Okay, so that but that's see that's not a problem with me. Like missing two or three games to me, honest, it's just like yeah. only the elite quarterbacks are not missing game in, in NFL. Only Rodgers, Brady, 
uh, uh, I mean, and that's Wilson. Close. Wilson before this year hadn't missed any games. Uh, Matt Mahomes, like we I thought, think Mahomes, Mahomes was going to be no, out. No, but I think Mahomes has missed there. games though. I think he, Mahomes it, has missed Mahomes, games. Mahomes, there was one because game they, where they, Mahomes, he he didn't play for the playoff for the for the. Uh, no, he did. Yeah, he, um, in the playoff game against the Browns, where he got tackled, and it looked kind of a little like very odd, very similar to the Daniel Jones hit. But then the, the Cowboys oh, game. because the cow, but, but he had the quarterback come in. That's what it is. He, and yeah, he, the game. yeah, it finished off and they won. Yes, but then the, the next but week then he came Mahomes back. Played. And, okay, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's why I was like, okay, everyone was over here saying, you know, oh the. Everyone was saying, maybe you're good. Everyone was saying, you know, hey, um, you know, he has to, he's concussed. Be careful. Like, why is everyone kind of forgetting that this is not the first guy to be, con- like, dudes in MMA will be concussed in this fight and will continue. Like, right, so, right, right, and right, I get right. it's a different sport. I'm just, I'm just using that no, point know, of view. Like, it. you have enough, like, if you, you have enough time at that point to be ready. And it's not like it's dangerous, albeit after that hit, he really hasn't been the same, you know, because Daniel Jones had, was having a, I mean, that game against Washington. If if Darius Slayton catches that ball, he would they win the game. They beat right. Washington. Right. And then against the the Saints, I mean, four hundred yards, two tuds. I mean, he he had moments that really made you think, like, man, if he's protected and he has weapons, he could be good. Right. And then that hit against the Cowboys happens, and then you know he had some moments here and there, but it just wasn't the same. Right. It just hasn't been the same. That's that's, that's super interesting. It's true. You, I, I, I haven't even taken that into consideration. How like after that Cowboys game, uh, th- things went sideways for him. Um, yeah, and then yeah, and then you see the neck issue coming out later. It it just seems like I think what the Giants more likely would do is bring him back. Yeah, they have to. He's on the contract. You bring him back, and then people are saying stopgap. He's the perfect stopgap. Mm-hmm. Like. Let let it ride and build the team up so and do it like the my, Bucks did. Here's my here's my thing with the Giants. I think they're ready to compete next season. How many how many dudes you think on the I defense agree. are gonna be gone next season? Um, Peppers. I, I, D- Danny Shelton's gone. He's irrelevant. He's gone. He's uh, replaced Raglan, right? Raglan, McKinney, all irrelevant dudes that are, can be easily replaceable for a lot better. Um, yeah, so uh, Peppers is the I'd big guy. Lorenzo's the question mark. Peppers is probably gone. Super it's, gone. It's, he has an ACL Pepper. injury, and and um, he's not gonna be good next year. And Love, to be honest, Love does the same job as Peppers, and and, and I even prefer Love over Peppers because I feel like I like, Love, I like Love a lot. I, I feel do like though. Love does be, has a better coverage than Peppers. So, lo, so with that being said, this defense is gonna look exactly the same, if not a little better, because. You're going to have Blake back, right? Yep. You're going to have, hopefully, a competent middle linebacker alongside Blake. You're not going to have Crowder. Right. Um, or, yeah. I mean, I'll, the, I, I hear there's a chance Jalen Smith, depending on what happens, who knows? Jalen I completely forgot about that guy. We'll talk about that guy in a minute. Yeah. But, yeah. absolute. Dude, okay, let's talk about him now. Hell, Jalen Smith was on some sideline to sideline, you know, type of status. On that game against the Cowboys, I, I, a Paul Dottino, who everybody hates or whatever, tweeted that he was lined up wrong in one play, and still ended up making the play on on Tony Pollard. Yo, Tony Pollard is no joke to me. Tony Pollard is better than Zeke, and I can't wait till next year till the Cowboys have that decision that they gotta pay Tony Pollard or Tony Pollard is gonna walk away. Like, are they gonna let go of Zeke or are they gonna let go of Tony? Um, so that's yeah. gonna be an interesting decision for the Cowboys. Not this season, not this offseason, but next offseason. Um, but hey, listen, Carl, I heard Carl Banks say this too. Like he just needs to go to linebacker school or something like that. He needs to find somebody to teach him how to play on the on the three four because he's a naturally four three linebacker. But this guy, athletic wise, is a beast, man. Like. Like, yeah. athletic-wise, I don't see the problem there. He moves. Like, you can see him. He moves a lot faster than yeah. Crowder. He got signed on He got signed on Friday and then came in on Sunday and had four tackles, not even probably knowing ha- a good part of the playbook. And and, and, I mean, and, and not only that, and four tackles and like 12, on 12 snaps or something like that. Like I Yeah, think, like he wasn't there. He wasn't there the whole time. Dude, that's insane, exactly. man. Like... Th- I'm about to look it up right now. It's a snap count for the Giants. Um, to see what was that because that's insane. That 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 yeah. is insane. Let me see. Uh, where's his name? 
uh, linebacker, linebacker, linebacker. Uh, Ragland. They don't even have him. Oh, Jalen Smith right here. Uh, he had set. Oh, yeah. So he had 17 plays. No. Was that? He had. I didn't really see him a lot on the field. I didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't see him a lot see... on the field. I feel like. I feel like when he was he he for the reps he had he he did work I I think I think he's for sure at the very least he's gonna be a guy that he can come in and play for situ like in a situation where Blake is out right or you know he can come in and I mean depending on I mean the Giant you you mentioned it the Giants need an off the Giants need a, a linebacker Bad. to be able to. Yeah, the Giants need a linebacker to pair alongside Blake Martinez that can cover those coverage deals. And, I you got know, him right here. Yeah. So this is this is the real uh, deal with this guy. He was um, so for some reason they make it like they make it so they it shows how many uh, he's played in general. 15, 15 snaps. That's all he played. Twenty one percent of the of the defense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, fit, yeah. That's. For to, I mean, fifteen snaps. Seventeen, seventeen snaps. So that was right. I mean, he, yeah, seventeen snaps. It's twenty four percent. We're we're and I know I don't want to go ahead and think like this is the savior to our defense. We nah, can't, but can't. at the very he's least, he's been thrown he's, away from two teams. He's gonna be able to. Yeah, he's gonna be able to give the. He's gonna be able to give the Giants a chance to put Tay Crowder back where Tay Crowder should be. And I'm not. I, I love Tay Crowder. I don't. He's the best. He's the for me. He's the best. Irrelevant pick in a long time. I mean, dude, last this year, guy, this guy he made is plays. great special teams. Like, like, like he's, he's yeah. he he deserves a roster spot in a roster. I completely yeah, agree yeah. with he that. Yeah, yeah, he I think I think he can be that. Like, I'm not saying he's going to be a guy to be able to play. But I think you could bring him in on packages here and there, and he's going to be able. Listen, to Listen, I think that you could put him teams. on. Well, here's the thing, too. I'm gonna be honest. I he's like deaf. Raglan on for, on a rundown. I, I'll pick Raglan over Crowder too, though. To be honest. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, take, yeah. Another thing too, this is Tay's second year and his first, and I kind of, it's really hard for me to like, that's why I was so impressed with Andrew Thomas. I mean, COVID was something that no one had ever experienced and it was their rookie year. Now it's their second no year. So, or I, nothing. Mean, I, yeah. I would like to think, I would like to think Tay Crowder is going to grow because Raglan's been in the hey, for a while now. Hey, I would love that. I, I would love to be proven wrong. Not necessarily. I don't think, I don't think Tay Crowder is ever going to be the best middle linebacker for the Giants. Or I would just like want to see I, more certainness yeah. from him. That's depth, it. depth piece and mm -hmm. a guy who can come in on certain, you know, blitz packages. Like he can blitz the he can blitz the quarterback pretty good well. Good blitzer. Middle. He's a really so I think you good can bring blitzer. him in. Yes. Yeah, you can bring him in at, in a blitz package. Bring him in on some. He could place. be a relief guy for Martinez. Like take some snaps player. off for like, Martinez. I, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, 100%. I don't think I don't think he's the be all end all, but I definitely think he's like a linebacker. Like you bring in Blake Martinez, Jalen Smith. You draft another guy, Tay Crowder. Those are four decent linebackers for. For, for a team right there. So, Manny, we're talking about the defense and how this defense is not missing much to be competitive. Again, like people are talking about that maybe a, maybe a, a good edge rusher, if we get an opportunity to get one of the top two guys in the draft, uh, do, you, do, you, do you think that... Uh, so Korloftis is a, is a dude. But what do me. you think that would be a reach at five or six? I don't think so because he's a top 10 player. Okay. And okay. also on top of that, hey, that's I not think, a reach. Then if it's a, it's a top ten, and I think and five, six, also too, yeah. I mean, I think. I, and granted, I haven't watched it. Like I have a playlist have, that I'm going to go. All, so I'm going to yeah. have a playlist that I can't wait to go through to watch of all these guys, right. offensive, defensive. But right, I mean, the, the one thing he does is that he pressures the quarterback. He pressures mm -hmm. the quarterback, and you may not his stats may not be awesome. Like he had two sacks this year, not the best. Dude, but, but you I, watch, I, I watched some of his. I think I watched some of his highlights and I saw his mechanics and I liked his mechanics. Yeah. I and he's a frame too. Yeah. And he's going to, and he's a guy, he has a motor on his, he has a motor that's just going to continue to move, continue to go. He takes on, he takes on double Kind of that teams. JJ Watt type of stuff that you, that yeah, you love to see. Yeah. That, that, that. And, I, and I heard, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's something that, I mean, I think you put him on a defensive side, then, I, I mean, I'm I'm don't know how you feel about Dex Lawrence, but for me, I think you put. I'm st he's certain... starting to grow on me, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. At I the think... beginning of the season, I'm like, yo, this guy is useless, and now more and more that I'm seeing him, he's really effective in the run game, though, dude. Like, I'm like, damn, dude. Like this guy, I'm, I'm wrong about this guy. This guy's actually really good in the run game, to be honest. So I th so I think that you let that if you get you know, 
you have Karloftis, you have Leonard Williams, you have Dexter Lawrence that can, you know, you can switch Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, D tackle, DN, mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm, the case. Mm -hmm. I, I like George Karloftis for that mm -hmm. defense. Mm -hmm. For me, honestly, I'm obviously, you know, Kayvon and yes. Aiden, those are the two better rushers. Right. But I think George Karloftis is a guy who can really, who can come in and he can be a guy that can, at, at the very least, at the very least, he's going to be depth on the rush because I think Aziz will be back better next year. Yes. Roche will be back better next yes. year. Yes. So this Those gives the two Giants guys that, that showed another... a lot of bright spot this year. So that's another thing, too. This, but this gives again, the... hopefully yeah. they improve because that's the thing we, we, we saw that with Simenez and do when MIA. That's why it's so imperative that the Giants don't think that they have their bookends. Mm -hmm. Keep drafting, keep drafting, mm -hmm. keep drafting. Like somebody said, or what about like with injuries and stuff like that? Like I saw a tweet that said, "Oh, the Giants' offensive line played well. Great, keep drafting more offensive linemen. Just, mm -hmm. just load it up, load offensive line, mm -hmm. load edge." My ideal, I, I'm not saying just to, to first do it to picks, do it. Yeah, yeah. My I'm ideal first three it, picks, it, but, it would be mm -hmm. the Giants go an offensive lineman in, in, in no particular order. It could be uh, so so because Shane and shout out to Shane. Um, he said that there's plenty of inside linebackers in this draft. You don't have to go first two picks on inside linebacker. So if, mm -hmm. again, if one of those premier, so I'm going to go with you where you're saying, if one of those premier, three premier edges are still there, grab one of those. Grab an offensive lineman, either tackle or inside guy. I don't really care. Grab one. Grab the best one that's there. And in the second round with the first pick, get an inside linebacker. If those three picks work out that way, I'm already thinking playoffs come next offseason. And then obviously... Yeah. The quarterback position is it's is, is, is it, so now on offense. We spoke about how the defense. This is a this defense is only going to get better next season. And another thing too is a lot of bad breaks that this defense is getting. Bradbury is dropping so many interceptions right in his hands, and yeah. it's like holy shit, dude! Last Adore, year you Adore, were catching those, Logan. dropping shit left and right. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But I also think that. Um, Patrick Graham came in with a concept of, dude, I'm going to play this Patriots man 24-7 defense. And he later learned these are not the corners to play man. Unfortunately, Bradbury is a really good zone corner, not yeah. a good man corner. He's too slow for that. And fine, play the guys to the, to the best of their ability. Their strengths. That's fine. Yeah. So on offense, obviously we have to address the offensive line. We need at least two... Uh, new, first of all, we need to bring a, a batch of new guys, but we at least need two new guys to be replacing tackle, inside guy, either center or guard, right? Yeah, yep. At oh, least, yeah. at least. And then it's a question is quarterback. What do we do with the quarterback situation? What do you think we should do there? I what think would you like to see? I'll, I'll, your, your perfect scenario. I'll go, all right, perfect scenario. And it's going to be too perfect. That does not even a point of like saying it, like going on after I say it. Okay, but so then give case, me your perfect, give me your realistic. Perfect case scenario. I think the Giants trade one of those draft pick, one of those first round picks, another first round pick, Dexter Lawrence. I know we just talked about Dexter Lawrence, but they trade Dexter Lawrence and they call Seattle and say, hey, here's our package and go and then bring in Russell Wilson. So because you would I get, want a 2022, 2021. Actually, and a, 20, be, a, a 2022 it, and a it would be the 2020, first wait, so the, this draft is actually going to be the 2022 draft so you would want a 2022 first rounder a 2023 first rounder and Dexter Lawrence you may have to trade in some other picks but if you if the Giants can keep at least one of their draft picks yes. and keep and get Russell Wilson like if they can keep one of their first round yes. picks and Have get to. Russell Wilson you got it you got to you, you can't give up two first for Wilson I'm sorry no no not, not that that part and then granted if they not, do not not this year's two first you can't do but that but it all depends on but for that situation it all depends on who the GM is because if it's listen if they give up the first two first round picks for Russell Wilson but they have a guy that can come in and evaluate talent not every first rounder is immediately there's not 32 first rounders that are that are going to pan out yeah, yeah, you can mm -hmm. find like that's why it's so important for the Giants to bring in the. That's right why people. I'm not obsessed with going with two offensive linemen in the first round. Like, dude, you guys are crazy. Like, uh, yes, that's gonna work yeah. out. That that could work out, but that also cannot work out. And now, what do you do? Yeah, you got for me, two linemen in the first round, and again, something yeah. didn't pan out. For me, I think it, uh, the only way you go two offensive linemen in the first round is if one all of those three, three edge rushers aren't are there. Gone. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, the two guys I would go is Evan Neal and. I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong, but Ekeem, 
Ikuanu, and I know everyone says Ikuanu is like more of a tackle. Mm -hmm. I would put that man in guard, mm -hmm. just like well, just like the Cowboys did with Zach Martin. He played tackle in college, put him in guard. Now he's an All Pro guard. Give me your if we don't get Russell Wilson scenario. If we don't get Russell Wilson, the Giants just need to bring in I, first gentleman. Gone. Gentleman's gone. Right. Judge gone. Mm -hmm. You bring in the GM. You make him. You make let him make that decision. Mm -hmm. Judge is Jones fifth year option or not? And at that point. Whatever goes on from there, go from there. Well, I don't there. think and nobody then, has to make that decision right now. Is Jones fifth? They, they do have not? to make it before like the summer, I think, of this year because he's about to be. This is his fourth year coming in right now, so they right. Need to so, make that decision no, so he's gonna be on the contract for twenty twenty two, correct? Yeah, he'll be. And, he'll but be you the, have he'll to be, pick up the option before the summer. Is that what it is? Before, Shit. yeah. Okay, so I would say absolutely. You don't even gotta. Yeah, gotta, yeah. Like that's don't, a no. Don't pick up. Don't pick no. up the fifth year option. You can just franchise him. Sign a guy like Tyrod Taylor. Or, um, I agree with that one. Yeah, like a, a quarterback that's comparable that can make Daniel Jones like, hey, we got a guy that took the Bills when the Bills were the Bills back to the playoffs, right? You know, in 2017. So you have a you, so bring in a guy like that, bring in the right, bring in the right coaches, bring in the right GM, build through the draft, sign free agents that's going to help you build through the draft. That's not right. going to come in and take a spot of somebody else. Right, a la Nate Soder. Right, right, right. And right. then just and then just go from there. And then worst case scenario, if Daniel Jones isn't the guy, well, you have an offensive line that's built. You have a defense that's better. Yes. You have coaches that are comparable. You have GMs that are comparable. And now the team is ready for the quarterback, whether it's drafting or signing whoever would be available and at that time. It's so crazy because let's just say, for example, if just in case, if, if we go by your scenario, and let's say for example. You're four weeks into the season, and Daniel Jones is, is just losing games left and right. You still have a team where it's going to have a revamped offensive line, hopefully a off-the-chain offensive coordinator, right? And then you have Kadarius, Tony, and Galladay as your one and two receiver with whoever the hell is going to be that wide receiver number three. Obviously, yeah. we have questions at tight end two. Who's going to be the tight end coming up next year? Uh, we, it's, it's probably the tight end for next year is not in the building right now. He's probably. He, I think he's in Coastal Carolina right now. Oh yeah, you like somebody Isaiah, in Coastal Carolina? Isaiah likely. Watch, watch, like when we do this, when we talk again. When do you think he's gonna be he's projected? Gonna be third rounder. Third rounder. Okay. Yeah, the, right now third rounder, but he may be a second. Like he played. He's he's a really good player for that. Coastal I absolutely Carolina think team. the Giants will draft the tight end in in somewhere. Yeah, I think the Giants are gonna somehow. draft the tight. I think they the need, Giants need somebody with size at tight end for sure. They need somebody with size. I mean, and that's a perfect case scenario for that tight end to come in. And I mean, we can say what we want about Kyle Rudolph, but he's still been in the league for ten years, so he's gonna be able to provide something to a young tight end that will help that tight end. I don't think Rudolph is gonna be here yeah. next year, though. That's a cap casualty that could be there mm -hmm. as well. But then you still have Caden Smith, a guy who I like a lot as a blocker and like a, a third or second yep. tight end guy. Yep, 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 I'm yep. not saying he's – yeah, I'm no, not saying no. he's – No, no, he's good depth. He's good depth. He's yeah. good de – yeah, he's good depth. And that's what mm -hmm. this team needs more than anything is good depth as right. well too. Because I think you can't, Ingram is like, gone. Ingram probably gets a, a decent contract somewhere else that we're not going to want to pay that. No, yeah. Um, and, yeah I'll, and, I'll, and deservedly yeah. so, we, we just can't pay Ingram. I truly I'm – I'm an Ingram believer. I just think – We've we I, I I truly believe that we haven't used Ingram to the best of his ability. He's not a lineup type blocking tight end. He's just not that guy. Um, yeah. But I can see him going to like Green Bay or anywhere where Aaron Rodgers is gonna go and just freaking have like a season and a half. Um, oh, I could def yeah, I can definitely see him playing well as well. A weird thing is I can see him playing very well with like a. I'll go back to a Russell Wilson quarterback. So maybe he finds his place. Like he has, yeah. Yeah, he, he, like he, like I think he'll get some. He'll garner some attention for sure. It's like people, be like people, man, seeing him with Fromm too. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, which I'm hoping that that's at our backup. I don't. I'm not even gonna bring in. The, in I'm not even gonna entertain the idea. Oh, he's the guy. He's not a guy. Right. Right. He's no. 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 And nobody can say that right now. Even listen. I'm. I'm. I'm on the. I'm riding the bandwagon for Jake Fromm. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I've seen tape on Jake Fromm, and I'm just like, listen, I, if Jake Fromm pans out to be what I think he could be, I think we have our Tyler Heineke, where yeah. he's going to be yeah. the stopgap. He's going to be the next year quarterback that's going to compete with Jones, and they're going to duke it out and see who's going to be the starter next year. Uh, yeah. yeah, Jones, what, what, and this is the funny part. Jones has the physical abilities, but I feel like Fromm has the mental game down packed. I 
the cadence that that Jake Fromm was working with, I was like, dude, this is freaking Aaron Jones. I mean, Aaron Rodgers esque. We talk about that, like he was even confusing his own damn players with that hard count cadence. Like I was like, yo, what the? F- Where has this been all year? We never had a hard cadence in this gi- yeah. in the Giants team since Eli Manning. So I'm yeah. like, what the? F- where is this coming from? You know what I'm saying? So it's little, look, like, for example, Glenn came in and the back shoulder came out of nowhere. Where, the f- where has this been? Uh, uh, um, Galladay got that 50-50 ball we've been hoping for. Fromm comes in and now we have a hurry-up offense. Where the, where the hell has that been? Like, wh- like I just That's, don't understand. That, yeah, that, that kind of goes into why I'm <laughs> – and listen – I wouldn't be upset if they if the Giants brought in an outside G- general manager and, and that general manager says, I want to stay with um, Coach Judge and go from there. At that point, you just better make sure Judge brings in the right, that they bring in the right OC and go from there. Right. But that's that's one one reason why I'm, I'm kind of off the judge, situ- judge train is because you say you're going to put the best players on the field. I don't care if this man knew 10% of the game book or whatever, or the playbook, yeah. or 15. I don't care. At He's, that point, so Brom was better. By the way, and that last week, Damon cut the Cowboys. He was 60% of the playbook in. Dude, you 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 should have put it him in. You should have put yeah. him in there, and you should have let him play there. As a matter of fact, this it's true. Jones, Coach Judge, is... Here's my problem with Judge. Judge says all the right things to me, at least off the field. In the field, I feel like he's not in touch with the game. He has no feel on the game. He's punting when he's not supposed to be punting. He's going for it when he's not supposed to be going for it. And when he goes for it, he has like these really questionable plays that, yes, Judge, you could say that that you're not the offensive coordinator and you're not calling these plays, but that's still your responsibility because you're the head coach. So that's my problem with Judge. I would... Listen, I, I, and I said this over and over. I wouldn't mind if Judge gets released after this year, especially if a new GM comes in and says he's not cutting it. Yeah, but oh, I'm yeah. also, but I'm also on the, at the understanding too that Judge is learning how to be a head coach too. It is what it is. Unfortunately, we have a guy that's not a head coach, never been a head coach anywhere, has never been one of the main two coordinators, which is a defensive or offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. This guy just. Unfortunately, we have what it's like. It's like a rook. It's like a left tackle, rookie left tackle at court at head coach. Also, like unfortunately, he's going through the learning pains, to the growing pains with us too, which is unfair. But it is what it is. Next year, I, that that's why I, I'm okay, I'm also okay with him coming in with an offensive coordinator who knows how to build an offense and see mm-hmm. if that maybe he learns right off the bat. If Judge is here next year. And the Giants' offense plays preseason games. I already know he learned his lesson, because off the bat, that pissed me off so much when the Giants didn't play preseason games this year. I was like, "What? Like we're not that good. We didn't have a good season last year. Why are these guys skipping all the preseason games? Because they've had joint practices with the other team. Like, yeah. I've heard of joint practices before." And they still end up going out and playing against the special teams. Coughlin did that a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's why I was like, "Yo, if that's a that's gonna that's gonna be the first check mark in my list. Are the starters gonna play in the preseason next year? And if they don't yeah. again, I mean, this guy didn't learn his lesson. He need, he's gonna he's gonna ruin our season. To be honest, that little thing is gonna piss me off right there. No, I I, I could I could see why that. It's kind of hard for me to get upset with that, just because not no real no team really was playing their guys like that that I remembered like that like as often like as they should have. So I so I ended up watching the Bills film. The Bills ended up playing uh 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 Josh Josh Allen, Allen. a quarter, a drive here like that like like and there was teams and I I did went to check to see if the other teams were doing that and there were teams putting in dudes the Patriots. And you come from that organization, so yeah, you know what? I, yeah, you, I'm flipped. It, yeah, I, I got flipped because that that is a good point, especially because, you know, you already mentioned that 
it's new weapons, it's new offensive. It's a it's a it's the same offensive line somewhat, but yeah. new pieces. You know, Nate Soder hadn't played for a year. Like maybe giving those guys like Andrew Thomas was coming off an injury, and this, uh, uh, coming off enough. injury game surgery. Feeling, game situation is so much better. Like, dude, like even if it was your back, like I just I didn't like that one bit, and and that's gonna. I'm gonna keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, yeah. And yeah, so let's. Let, in ter- I want to. I want to just. We're gonna wrap it up now because we're about to go in an hour. So let's just okay. kind of give like our, our parting shots, pretty much. Um. Here's a big question. Do you want to see the Giants lose out for the rest of the season? No. No. Me neither. I, I'm not a. I'm not the type of guy like. I was gonna at you something very not nice when you said and cheesy even upset when you said um, the Giants are gonna lose out the Giants are gonna win out and then lose draft capital and it's gonna stink or something like that and I was like well right, I said first so, off, so I so, so just to correct it I said it's gonna okay, it's, yeah. people are gonna be mad at that yeah yeah yeah, yeah people, not me yeah. I don't give, I, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm watching you know the what? games because I'm enjoying my week you know what I'm saying like like I'm glad a win I, enjoying I'm glad my I week. Didn't. I'm glad I didn't at you because yeah. I would have. Yeah, no, honestly, I I tend I agree with that as well. People are going to be upset. Like, what are you doing? You're wasting your. Like, people got all upset a few years back when they lost that game when they won that game against Washington and I lost did. to Chase Young. Dude, I, I did, I did. I'm not gonna lie. And a part of me was like, that stinks. But then yeah. also too, I was like, happy and mad. Yeah. First off, if we would have, if that would have been the case, and we get Chase Young, then people would have been. Those same people would have been mad that Chase Young is not, not performing. Right now and not doing so his people right. are gonna like for me winning, win, right. win, especially because you just you don't, don't have, know. You don't know who's in the draft. You don't know who's gonna be in the out. draft, and that, that's why. That's why mm-hmm. it's you just just win, win, and then worry about all that stuff later. First off, if you beat Chicago, that's still gonna help your draft stock. Right, one of your picks one. is gonna go up. Exactly. And then on top of that, too, I mean, we could say whatever we want about draft stock and this and that, but that's why it's so important that you bring in the right people that can, that not only are good at drafting, but are good at signing undrafted free agents as well. Like you, you could still, like, it doesn't matter if you're picking one through 10, wherever the case, right. if you don't have a GM that's going to know what the hell they're doing, then that, those picks are going to be wasted anyways. So that's right. why you need to make sure you bring in the right people. So right. that to me is the most important. Like, with, like, Win, win games, right. but make sure you have the right GM that's going to be able to make those decisions. So here's my, you know? here's the reason why I want to see the Giants win. Because with the Giants winning, you're going to see team improvement. You're going to see the improvement on certain players that are possibly going to be here next season. And that's all I'm looking at right now. Who's going to be in this <laughs> roster next season? And are they showing who's going to have a job. That's one thing for sure. Two, we're playing the Eagles. We're playing Washington and we're playing the Bears. I don't want to lose to a division player. I don't. I want to eliminate the Eagles off the playoffs. That's gonna be next week. I wanna. And I want to improve our draft stock with the Bears by beating them, and possibly eliminating the Redskins if they're even having contention on the last week. Yeah, the Washington football team on the last week, if they're in contention still at that time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's and I think there's a and, you come down yeah. with me. We're taking the misery with us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think there's a and I think the Giants like I don't think it's too crazy to think the Giants can beat the Eagles. One reason this and maybe this is a dumb reason, but the Eagles just played a game Tuesday night. Now they got to get ready for a game on Sunday. But not only that, look how crazy we played them when they were here. Like we shut them down. That is going to be a lot yeah, of the reason was because be a, they decided a, not to run the ball. They decided to be get pretty and start throwing it left and right. But that's not our problem. That that was their problem. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be. It'll be very interesting to see these next three games. On, um, I mean, I think it's a win-win. We win if we win out. Hey, that's awesome. We're gonna be. In, we're going into the season on some wins. These players are feeling better. Let's go. Yeah. If we lose out, Joe just is probably gone. Yeah. So hey. Yep. Win-win. Regardless, we'll still be fans and we'll still be here talking. Absolutely, man. And, and I'm going to wrap it up right there, man. Manny, give me your Twitter handle for everybody who's watching this, man, so they could go ahead and they add you and follow you and all that stuff, man. Yeah, so follow me at Manny Madrigal 58. That's M A N N Y M A D R I G A L 58. All right, guys, for Manny, I'm Antonio, man. This is Breaking Tackles, man. Have a great one, guys.